Now it's your turn again. Suppose ABC Company is expecting additional demand for 2,000 gift bags in the coming year. The company has the capacity to handle the additional demand, but a t potential supplier has offered to make the bags for $19 per bag, which ABC Company would then custom print and ship. Assume the same cost information as our previous your turn. Direct material, $8. Direct labor, $4. Variable manufacturing overhead, $3. Variable selling cost, $1.50. Fixed manufacturing overhead, $2. And fixed selling and administrative cost are $2.50 for a total cost of $21. Now, additionally, here, the custom printing of the bag is variable at $1 per bag. Follow the steps in our decision-making framework and see if you can answer the following questions. What is the decision to be made? What are the alternatives? What information is relevant to making the decision? And should the company make or buy these bags? Take a few minutes, give it a try, then come back and we'll see how you did. And I'll meet you at the light board in just a few minutes. And here we are again. Hope things are going well. Let's take a look at this one. How many alternatives do we have? Well, we have two. What a surprise, two alternatives. We can either make the 2,000 bags or we can buy the 2,000 bags. Let's take a little financial analysis into account here. I have our, our two alternatives and what we'd like to do is, is determine the additional revenues and costs that are associated with each alternative and then we'll look at what that means about profit and we would prefer from a financial standpoint that alternative that gives us the most profit. All right, so we're talking about 2,000 gift bags here. If we make those 2,000 gift bags, we will definitely be able to sell them and get some additional revenues. But think about this. If we buy those 2,000 gift bags, we would also generate some additional revenues. And we would expect the revenues to be exactly the same, regardless of whether we make the bags or buy the bags from the supplier and then sell them. Okay? So we could put the revenues here that we would earn, and we could put the revenues here, and we would recognize there's no difference. Or we could just start by recognizing there's no difference and not worry about them because they're not relevant to the decision. So we'll make our decision based on the difference in costs only. If we make these bags, the cost that we would incur would be the additional variable cost associated with making them. Remember now, if we make these 2,000 bags, we're not going to incur more fixed cost. We'll just incur more variable cost. Let's look and see how much that is. Direct material, oh, this is looking familiar, right? We've seen this before. Direct labor, variable manufacturing overhead, variable selling costs. Those are our variable costs in this situation. They total to $16.50. So if we make these bags, we'll incur an additional $16.50 per bag in cost. There's 2,000 bags, so that would be in total $33,000 additional cost. Now, if we buy the bags, we have a different cost. We'd be paying $19 for each of those bags. And that would come to a total of $38,500 for the 2,000 bags. Now, notice if we had taken this $21 per unit cost, which included the fixed cost, and assume that we would incur an additional $21 here, this buy alternative would have looked more, would have looked preferable to the make alternative. But it's recognizing that we don't incur the, any additional fixed cost, and we only incur the variable cost, that allows us to see that we're better off if we make these bags. So we are actually $5,000 worse off if we choose to buy, so our preferred alternative is to make the bag.